In this video, we are going to cover discounted cash flow valuation. This is also related to time value of money. When you have multiple cash flows and you want to find out the future value, what this means is that instead of having one initial deposit and then it sits there and you wait until so long in the future, maybe months or years, without withdrawing or depositing, what number you have, the difference here is that they could be deposits periodically as time goes by, which will increase the future value. So in this example, we go straight into it. You are planning to deposit $4,000 at the end of each of the next three years in a bank account paying 8% interest. We'll assume annually. You currently have $7,000 in the account. So there's already $7,000 sitting in the account. And then every year, you're going to deposit $4,000. How much will you have in three years? How much in four years? So what you have here is the solution for three years. So future value is we're going to calculate. So here is a, it, it's doing it one by one. And, and then it adds it up at the end. And this is the process. The formula, it's the same as future value. You have some kind of present value and you multiply times one plus the rate and then an exponent representing how many years in the future in this case. Uh, but properly it will be how many periods. It just happens to be yearly this time. Now notice year zero is when where the $7,000 come in because it's already in the count. The next $4,000 deposit doesn't happen until a year from now, be year one, and so on. So the way we choose the exponent in the future is three here because we're moving three periods in the future. One period, two period, three periods because you're trying to find out the future value at the end of year three. The, fun, the, the universal way to look at it is if you want to know the value in year three in this case, and you are currently in year zero, you can do three minus zero, three. A year from now, when you do the $4,000 deposit, you want to know between year one and year three. So three minus one, two, because it's going to be two years, two periods, and so on. So when you do the formula, this amount of money will grow to be $8,817.98 three years from now if it grows at 8% per year compounding. The 4,000 is only going to be two years, but it does grow to 4,665.60. The next one grows to this amount. Now, the third year, it stays at 4,000. And the reason is because you just deposited it, but it doesn't grow. It doesn't say it here, but it will be the same as if you were to put this formula with a zero exponent. And when you put a zero exponent, that becomes a one and 4,000 times one, 4,000. Then what you do is you add these amounts together. And in the future, you will have $21,803.58. So to recap, you have 7,000 on the account growing at 8% for three years. A year goes by, you deposit 4,000, it's going to grow 8% for two more years. On the second year, you deposit another 4,000, and it's going to grow 8% for one year. And then you deposit, uh, you make a last deposit of $4,000. At that point, your account should have $21,803.58. If you were to let it sit for another year, but you do not deposit $4,000. You're not depositing an additional 4,000. That's it, no more deposits. You're just gonna go, let it sit there for another year. You can grab this number and grow it by one more year. And that's what you see here. And then you will have 23,547.87. Another way to look at 
multiple uneven cash flows moving into the future. Now, the difference of this exercise and this one, this one you have 4,000, 4,000, they were even the same amount. Here, the deposits are different amounts. Now, the reason you see a negative in front of the 100, the 200, and the 300, that's not that you're losing money, but it represents a cash outflow. Money is coming out of your pocket and you are depositing it, depositing it into this investment tool that is returning 7%. At the end, it's positive because you receive your money back in your pocket. So we treat it as positive. We just put the sign to express as a cash outflow. So same idea. Now here in this example, there is no money when you first start. And then at the year end of year one, you put $100. At the end of year two, you deposit another $200. And at the end of year three, you deposit $300. So the future value, here we're doing the same thing. We're just looking at it on a timeline approach instead of just going down, doing one by one, adding them together. But it's the same concept. We take this one. We want you to know from year one to year three. So remember, we do three minus one. That's how I get this two here. So this one represents the same future value formula moving it into the future, two periods, three minus one, exponent means two. So we take the 100, 7%, one plus seven percent is 1.07, two periods, that's exponent. Now I have 114.49. If I take the 200 and I apply the same thing, three minus two is one. So you can imagine a, a one is an exponent, but it's not necessary to write it. So they take the 200, times 1 plus 7%, 1.07, and it grows to 214. Now, the 300, we don't do anything with it because it's on the same period. It doesn't grow. So when you add them together, we have 628.49. That will be for year three. Now, if you want to know what would happen if you let it sit there, you just let it sit there, into year five, but no more deposits. Then you can take the 628, multiply it by the 1.07, which is the, the factor for the future value formula. We're using a two because we said five years. Five minus three, that's two. So two periods in the future, it will grow to $719.56. Uh, so we can then also use the same approach for present value using the present value formula. Now, in this case is, if I'm going to receive some money in the future, how much would that money be worth today? Uh, I will use the lottery example again. They could be gonna, they're going to give you payments throughout time, and you can get a present value to see how much is it worth today. And you could compare that to the lump sum option and see which one it benefits you more. Now, in this case, the payments are uneven. There are multiple ones. And the way you can look at this is just like the example on the screen says, if you're offering an investment that will pay these amounts. All right, so you give me money now. That's what they're telling you. Give me some money now. And what I'll do is I'll give you $200 in one year, another 400 the next year another 600, and then 800. So the question is, well, how much should be the maximum I'm willing to pay for that opportunity? If I'm going to receive that money in the future, how is, what's the most I should give you? And what you do is you want to compare it to something else. Let's say there is a portfolio you can invest at 12%, and then that portfolio has about the same risk. So, I could put my money in the portfolio for 12%, or I can go ahead and pursue this investment. So you want to compare it. That's where this 12% comes in. And the question is, what is the most you should pay for this one? So let's look at it. So instead of the future value formula, now we have the present value formula, which is instead of multiplying, is dividing. So 
the division is the one plus the 12 percent and the exponent is one because we are looking at present value we move instead of moving things in the future we are bringing them to year zero before we went from zero to three now what we're doing is going from four three two and one into zero so same approach, one minus zero will be one, two minus zero is two, three minus zero is three, four minus zero is four, because we're taking it so many years into the present. So we start with the $200 for year one, because it's a year in the future, you discount it by the 12%, one plus the 12% exponent one, and that's the present value of that amount. You do the same thing with the 400, but two periods, exponent two. And you get 318 with 88 cents. Repeat the process with the next one, $600 for three periods. And then $800 for four periods, the present value. Once you add them together, the present value is 1,432 and 93 cents. The way to interpret that number, remember, we are ask, uh, answering the question, what is the most you should pay for this one? And it's because you're comparing it to another investment opportunity of that returns 12%. So if they tell you, give me $1,432.93, and I'll give you these cash flows in the future, that's what we call the indifference point. You can invest here or invest in one of the other ones. It wouldn't make a difference. Now, if they ask you for more than this amount, then you shouldn't pay for it because for that amount, you can do better in the other ones. So if they ask you for more for this investment, then it means that they're, they're returning less than 12%. So it may not, that should be the maximum you're willing to pay. Now, if they offer the investment for a lower amount, let's say $1,300, then that means that investment is returning more than 12% and it's uh, below the maximum you're willing to pay. So that's a good deal. You should go for it. This is the uh, same example with the timeline approach that we used before. Notice that we're going from right to left. And same thing with exponents, and you add them together at the end. But it's the same process. In this example, let's say you are saving for retirement. You offer the opportunity to put some money away for retirement. You receive five annual payments of $25,000, each beginning of 40 years. How much would you be willing to invest today if you decided an interest rate of 12%? Similar approach, similar scenario, I should say, uh, with uh, even cash flows over a period of time. What you see here, they just give an example how you can use a calculator. If you got a financial calculator, the Texas Instruments specifically on that one. But this is what it will look like if you do the timeline. You would be receiving $25,000 a year starting in year 40. That's what they say here. Each beginning in 40 years, you receive five annual payments, each beginning in 40 years. So in 40 years at year 40, you'll get the 25,000. Then here, and those are the five you will get. But notice, all the other cash flows are zero for now. Cash flows from one through 39 also zero. And then you just see those 25,000 in order to get the calculation. And the way you can input in the calculator, even though they have these here, this is what it means. Cash flow zero, you enter zero. Cash flow one, zero. However, you can then say that that cash flow one of zero is going to repeat itself 39 times. So that's frequency. That's what that F is there, frequency. Then cash flow two is 25,000. Now the calculator understands that 39 of cash flow ones happened. 
before that. So even though it says cash flow two, it knows that it's at the point 40 because you did the first 39 over here. And then the frequency of the 25,000 is five. Then the interest 12% and that's your answer. So here they're showing you how you can do cash flow zero, zero, cash flow one equals zero, and then frequency of 39. And then cash flow two, 25,000, frequency two, uh, frequency of the second cash flow is five. Now, the reason you can't put CF zero, uh, zero, and then 40 is because this is the present value part. All these cash flows are in the future. It needs to know that, that different, the difference between present value and cash flows in the future and the different patterns they follow. Annuities and perpetuities. Annuities, by definition, uh, find a series of equal payments that occur at regular intervals. So this will be, an, this could be an annuity, an example of annuity. You get a, a specific amount, same amount, over a specific period of time. But it has to end at one time. There is a difference between annuities ordinary and annuity due. We'll talk about these a little later. But do understand that there's uh, some payments that happen at the beginning of the year versus a payment that happens at the end of the year. We'll discuss a little this. Uh, we'll discuss this more in detail later. But for now, we're talking about end of year payments to go over it. And uh, those are called ordinary annuities. Another thing, unless the word beginning or do or something like that is mentioned, you will always assume this is the, the status quo, the standard. Always assume that you're dealing with an end of year payment, ordinary annuity, unless it specifies that situation. Perpetuity. It's the same as an annuity, except that it happens forever. It's infinite. Now, these are formulas you can follow if you want to do it manually. However, you can do this in the calculator, in your financial calculator, as you have seen in the previous videos, they got tutorials on how to do it. Now, these are the formulas of perpetuity and annuity. Perpetuity, infinite, forever is fairly simple. Is whatever cash flow payment, whatever money it is that you're getting, you divide it by the rate of return, and that gives you the present value. Annuities, uh, a little more complex because they're not forever. They have an end date, and that's why the T comes in play, and you have to follow this approach. But it's really two numbers still, just the payment and the R. Well, the T is the third number. But what I mean is the same two letters here, payment and rate. And then it's adjusted in order to include the time, how when it's going to stop in the future. And everything is just ones thrown around. And that gives the present value. The future value is, is this formula, but turned around. It just turns it around a little bit. And that's why you see the, the bottom piece and the top piece kind of moves around a little bit. That's how you want to do it manually. We're going to go ahead and stop, uh, pause the video here, and we'll continue with these examples on the next video.